it real I'm independent, I don't need no deal I'm Jaws on the beat, I got flow that kills Do my thing with a few G's, Lauren Hill A few different ways you can work with drums in FL Studio and we're going to explore them now depending what sound you're going for you want that's going to be the best style for you to choose from everything we're going to look at so let's dive into how I would get started first I'm feeling quite a slow beat so I'm going to bring this down to 88 and we are just going to grab some samples here so jump into the sample archive and we're going to use the Anno Domini drum collection of volume three we're going to use that because it's a great free pack that you can download and I'll make sure that's linked in this video for you to go and grab so we're going to find some sounds we like we're going to use kick two here now I'll quite often just bring the audio directly into the track like this just with a click and a drag and I'll drop it here on track one the reason I do that that is I can very quickly and easily see what I'm doing and where I want to put each sound and it's also always going to be at full volume for me with something like a kick drum it's seldom that I want to bring that volume down but if if I do there are ways that we can do that as well so I'll bring this one in here so I've got uh, the ability to just drop the audio wherever I like but I'm also going to right click and I'm going to and I'm going to click open in new channel and that's going to open the kick in a sampler channel for me and we can now see that that's up here so that means later, if I want, I can control it with MIDI as well and combine the two together. Now to start a drum pattern, we're just going to zoom in here. To zoom, we can just hold the command key and use our mouse wheel to zoom in. Or we can click up here and just drag and zoom in this. To zoom in lengthways, we just hold option or alt. And we don't need all of this at the end here. So we're going to make sure that stretch here isn't enabled. Take our cursor to the end and we're just going to bring this back. And it's just snap into a set point there and that's completely fine. Now we're going to want probably two to three kicks per bar here. We're going to go for a pretty standard hip hop feel. So we'll go for a nice swing. So it's right on the first bar and then it's just right on the first beat and then it's in between the three and the four. Now, something really interesting has happened. The sample has been really slowed down, and that sometimes happens when samples are recorded in a different bit rate to what your project is. So the way to fix it is we're going to double click on the sample, and we're going to change the mode to slice map. It'll probably be on resample. It's really slowed down or stretch. It'll be really off that way. If we do slice map, we'll get the original sample. And that will fix that issue for us. So here we've just got... Now we need some kind of snare to go in with that. Now the snare, sometimes I want that to be the full volume all the time, but and I'll just bring a piece of audio in. Other times I'm going to use MIDI. So let's have a look now how we'd use MIDI to control it. I kind of like that snare. So we are going to right click, we're going to open in a new channel. This is going to be our first pattern that we're going to use in this project. And just for good housekeeping, let's send it straight to our track here. Now it's currently named Kick 2, but we're going to have this be our snare track. So it's now going there and it gets rooted to the drum bus for us. We're going to make a brand new pattern. Now this is on pattern 3 because I already have some things preloaded with this preset. We're going to make a new pattern. It's going to jump back to 1. We're just going to call it Snare. And we're going to open up the piano roll just here. We can press F7 or just click up here. We're going to make sure in here it says piano roll and is going to our snare. We're just going to find the root note for it. It's usually going to be a C. It's going to be here. It's far too out. Far too high pitched. It's right here. And we're just going to put our notes bang on point here. However, I want them to be slightly out of time. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can click on the note and move it within the grid, or we can hold option and move the note, and we can move it in tiny increments this way. We can have it be maybe just a little bit early or just a little bit late. We can also turn off snap up here, turn it to none, and then we can freely move the note around. So we now need to just make sure we've got our snare pattern selected. We can drop it in here. So now we've got. It's just a little bit early, so it's ever so slightly off the beat, just giving us a little bit of a feel. Now, because we have this as a MIDI pattern, we can also control the levels. If we were to put some more snares in, we can have it so that maybe the first snare is a little louder than the second. Just adding a little bit of feel. If we hold Command, we can select our kicks, drag those across. We've now got a two-bar loop.
to add a bit more of a live feel to it on this second one here, we're just going to have a bit of a, a ghost note snare. We're going to have a slightly shorter one after the original at a really low level. And we can use it on different kind of timings to see what we're after. I quite liked it where it was before. Okay, let's give some percussion to this now. So here we've got a nice shaker sound. We're gonna do the same thing. Right click, open, insert new channel. Got our percussion here. Let's send it to perk one. And let's make a new pattern for it. What we're gonna do, we're gonna drop the pattern into playlist here so that while we're working on it, we can actually hear what we're doing. But this time I'm gonna take snap off entirely. We're gonna program this in like this. We're gonna try and have it on each note. Because we've got snap off, they can be slightly off and we can really play around with the timing. So I kind of like that first two being really tight and the second two being a little bit late. It's kind of nice. Let's bring those back, but keep these just a little bit off. Copy that, keep it roughly in the same place. So I'm going to put the snap back on now, loop that entirely. Now, this is quite a dark shaker. I actually want to pitch it up a little bit with the uh, with the track. I'm just going to listen to the drums. I just want to bring it up a little bit into a higher pitch. So I'm just going to use literally the time stretching and just pitch it up slightly. Like that. I'm going to shorten the notes a little bit. I want it to be a little bit tighter. Um, so we're going to select all of them, hold Option, and then we can shorten them all together. And in the mixer, I'm just going to put it slightly off to the right. And in here, I'm going to control the gain a little bit. I'm going to take it back a little bit in the mix. It doesn't need to be as loud. It's very loud for a shaker that. I just want it to sit there. Okay, I'm kind of after like a dirty hi-hat sound. That's what we've got. Now that sits nicely on the other side as well. So I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. We're going to open, we're going to send it to a hi-hat. So we've got HH here. Make sure it sounds right. It does indeed. And in the piano roll, we're going to switch that up. It goes to hi-hat closed. We're going to make a new pattern. We're going to call that HH, which I just use for hi-hats. And here we go. And kind of have this super rigid, I think, and then just a little flurry at the end. And we'll just move some of the levels around the touch as well. Now, for how wonky that shaker is, you can really hear how rigid the hi-hat is. Okay, that's working. Now we've got plenty of space in here to perhaps fit some other kicks in as well. I'm just gonna shorten this up and go. And we can have another kick straight after here. Now this time we've got the double snare going on. So we could maybe bring this kick back here uh, and really shorten it up so it doesn't get in the way of the overlap. Try this. Again, with the hi-hat, I'm just going to bring that down a little bit with its gain here. Not in the mixer, because we're not really at a mixing stage yet. I don't want to bring it back too much, but just a little bit. That 
that's all well and good. That sounds all right. But there's some other things within FL Studio we can do to really kind of brighten this up. We're going to use the FPC because it has a kit with it. It's got a really nice drum sound. So if we just hit F8 and we're going to go FPC and we'll take the FPC drum machine. I'm just going to drop that over here and let this guy load up and let's see. Oh, so we've got some pretty nice sounds there. This light ride is something I quite like. So we're going to use the same technique as before and just really have like a nice high end element just riding over this whole thing, nice and bouncy. Let's just do that and let's stick you in this ride. Have another pattern and we're pointing towards the FPC, which is perfect. And this will name everything for us, which is beautiful. There's the ride. And yeah, we can have a nice smash sound afterwards and then we just have like really low down riding ones afterwards. I think we can actually have super quiet ones in between. So let's just make these ones super quiet. And that gives us a nice live element to the whole thing. Uh, we're just going to sit that on the ride. Even though it's the FPC, we could send it out to other tracks as well. All we're using for there is the ride, really. Cool, so that's pretty much how I'm going to put a drum break together inside FL Studio. One last thing I do right at the start is I actually get the reverb on the snare because it's always a big part of the feel. Now my template here has something called HVerb, which will usually have HVerb already on it. But as we're trying to do this mainly in FL, uh, we're going to just use an FL stock reverb. So we can just go into here. Start typing reverb. So we can just go into here, go down to uh, the delay and reverb section, and we could use the Convolver would be a good option, or even the Fruity Reverb 2, and stick that on there. And we are quite literally going to use the preset of Drum Room and the Snare. We can just send over here and notice how they're both the same color. We just do that, and now we'll have a really reverby snare. far too much. So we're going to dial that back. And I think that can be quite a bit longer and quite a bit more complex as well. Let's give it a bit more on size. A bit more of decay. No, not that much. Yeah, oh, that's got some vibe to it. And that right there, guys, that's how I would get a drum break ready to go inside FL Studio. Hope the video was helpful for you. Let's move on to the next one.